A few months ago, I made a tutorial series on grid-based movement on an isometric map. Now, in the interest of saving time, I skipped a step of creating the actual project and the tile map. And one of the most common questions I get ever since then is how do you make the tile map? How do you get the sorting right? How do you do all that, all that good stuff? So that's what this video is all about, is those are for those people who are struggling in the very beginning and it's just to wrap up that tutorial finally. So yeah, let's jump into that. So first things first, before we have a isometric tile map, we need an isometric tile. So feel free to skip ahead, by the way, if you've already have this, most people probably already looked up tutorials on this, but I wanna cover everything if we can. So let's make a new canvas of like 64 by 64. Um, not majorly important. We're gonna make a tile that is uh, <coughs> totally, for 32 by 32 size. So uh, it's not overly complicated. We're gonna, in, I'm using air sprite, but you can use any tool you really want. Um, the rules are for isometric is generally, generally this isn't locked in, but you go down by two. I already messed up. You go down by two every time. Uh, let me find, where was it? Like so. So it's two across, one down is the rule for isometric tiles usually. Technically, you can do what you want. As long as everything's consistent, it would work. But this is the classic sizing that you want to do. And that's really all you need to know of what we need. So where am I going? So we're going to go down that way. And we're going to go back up again. And then we're going to go back up to our guy here. Boom. See? Super difficult, I know, I know, super difficult. For the bottom part of the tile, we want the the outline to kind of be on the darker side of the of the cube. So typically the light is usually shining on the right hand side, so we're gonna move it over to the left. Uh, we're just gonna draw it all the way down to the bottom, why not? And then we'll do it like this. Um, I wanna reiterate as well that I am not an artist. <laughs> this is just uh, how I do it. I'm on this side, I'm gonna go all the way up to the top, and all the way up to the top. Super, and now we have a outline for our tile sorted out. Um, we can give that a few colors here. So we wanna imagine how the light is gonna be shown. So we so the brightest color on top, a slightly darker color on the side here, and then the darkest here. And then there is your super duper tile, wonderful. Um, let's make it a little bit fancier though as well, because we're gonna, for the sake of the tubes, I'm just gonna do some a little bit of drawing here. Do a dark overhang here, and actually, I just realized you want you kind of want your outlines. Well, it depends on on the style you're going for, but I like the my outlines to be the same on the top because that way they don't show when you when you stick all the tiles beside each other. So we're gonna get rid of all the all the top outline at least, just like that, and that is our little grass tile that we're gonna use. Okay, and we can even go a little bit further. We can do a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of grass or something lying around it. Um, a little bit of flower. Okay. So here, that's that's our tile sorted. Um, let's as well do maybe one more. I'm just gonna fast forward through one more. There is not a very nice uh, water tile. That should do us for what we need to do. So very quickly, now we're just gonna export this as a sprite sheet into our Unity project. Now with our tiles drawn, we can move on to our Unity project and get everything set up nicely. So first of all, we're gonna click on our exported uh, sprite sheet and we're gonna do some changes in the inspector here. So first we gotta change it to multiple because there are multiple images. I like to set the pixels to 22 or base pixel unit to the size of the sprite that you're using. Uh, we're gonna go from filter mode to 
point no further. I don't know what that does. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't know what that does. And then I am doing uh, compression to none. We're going to apply that and we're going to go into our sprite editor. And here all we have to do is we go to slice and we can do an automatic slice, which will give us our, our boxes that we want for our images. But what we want to do here is we want to move this. Technically, you don't actually have to do this, but I think it does look, look a lot nicer within your palace. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, I'm going to do it from, we're going to do a custom pivot point. We're going to go from z X is 0 0.5, and then we're going to do 7.5 on the Y axis. Um, over here as well, take the same one. 0 0.5 and 7.5, or just 0 0.75. We're going to apply those changes, and that is our images, our sprite sheet done, how we want it. Now, to create our tile map, we're going to do right click uh, 2D object tile map, and we're going to create an, an isometric Z as Y tile map. Okay. And we're going to leave this pretty much alone, except the only thing I want to change is, is the mode instead of chunk. I want to change the individual. That means it's going to kind of sort all of our tiles individually instead of um, in one big lump. It just it, it's, it's better when you have, if you want to add height or props in uh, into your, uh, your scene. Well, now in our scene view, if we click on tile map, we see our grid up here. And we can click on this button here that opens up our palette window. And our palette window is basically like a paintbrush that we can use for drawing out our maps. So we can go create new tile map. Uh, in grid, we're going to say isometric Y is Z. Um, let's call it uh, tile like that. And now there's not nothing you need to change here, but depending on your tile, you may need to change the cell size Y. This is tends to be the so the top of your tiles, not the entire tile, but the top of it, it is the height of that divided by the width. Um, because I am, uh, my height is 16 by, and, uh, and uh, the width is 22 pixels, I don't need to change it because it's 0 0.5. But if you have a funny shaped tile, you might need to pay attention to this. But otherwise, I don't need to do anything here. I can just create it. Uh, was created here in our pilot folder. And now to create, add our tiles to our palette, we just need to click on our image and we're just going to drag it in like so. And that'll create a tile asset for our tile. And boom, we have a tile there. And we could do the same for our, oh, I clicked on the wrong image. We can do the same for our water tile. Okay. Now there is one detail I intentionally missed out that I'm going to show you now. Um, I'm just going to take my palette off the screen, but it's still it's still there. Is that when I start drawing now, uh, I can show you my drawing actually. Uh, so I just click on the tile I want, and then it appears in here. See? Boop. And it starts drawing. So when I start drawing, it looks great right now, right? It looks like it's all working. But a lot of people experience an issue then when you start adding in Z's. Let me just fill this out. So when I come in here and I set my Z position to two and I start drawing, it should be above my tile map, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem to be working correctly. It's actually going underneath it, strangely enough. And that is because you need to set a custom sort axis on your project settings. And this is a detail that most people seem to be missing when, when they're asking me, about this stuff. So we're going to go to custom axis. Um, y1 is fine. And Z, according to Unity's um, documentation, the best value here is zero, minus 0 0.26. And you know, I don't know why. <laughs> there is some fancy maths behind us, and I, they, they had some kind of formula there to calculate this. Um, but you know, for me, this works. So I don't really care what that formula is. But when I Enable that and go, now suddenly our tiles are working nicely and correct. And that is kind of what you need to know for creating a, a tile map. Um, let's just take a, a moment to maybe make something that looks a little bit nicer than all of this. So I'm just going to fast forward for a second. 
one other thing I started doing when I on my own maps is that I actually start setting my floor tiles up at Z axis one instead of zero. Um, this is for our water tiles. So um, I just think it adds a nice little layer of of, uh, of depth to the map. So if I just create a wee square here, and then I will kind of remove a little square. Oh no, I wanted the square, god damn it. Square, 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 see? And then I can set this to zero, click on my water tile, then in here, I can put a little, a little like trough. I just think that looks kind of nice. It adds a nice little layer of depth to the map that otherwise wouldn't have been there. Beforehand, what I used to do is I used to just have them all at the same level, and then that, so there was my water, uh, and this just looks so much nicer. So so that's a little tip. If you have maybe water or lava, put it in one layer lower, and it it just it adds a little bit of niceness to it. It looks it looks pretty good, I think. And there it is, our lovely little tile map built entirely within Unity. Um, now, I'm not done. There's one more thing I want to show you guys before we finish this tutorial. But for this, if you just want to use Unity, this is all you need. And that is all I want to talk about today. Short and sweet, I know. I did want to talk about tiled a little bit, and I was going to show, show this off and import a map into Unity so you can see that as well. But when I imported it, for some reason, the import sentence it didn't it didn't like my tiles and I can't they all got messed up and I don't know why. So I'm gonna have to look into that and probably make tile a separate video if people are interested. Let me know if you if you care at all. Uh, it is a cool tile. It is a cool tool. Uh I don't know why it's not working right now. Um I've used it before and it was fine, so I'm not sure what's going on right now, but I'll I'll figure it out and come back if if it does interest. Um but yeah, that's it. I know normally I cover things that are a bit more complicated than than this. Um and most of you people watching are already past this point and you just don't care. So, uh, thanks for watching, if you did keep watching. Uh, next up is going to be a tutorial on RPG systems for a character. So, like, attributes and stats and stuff and leveling and stuff like that. And then that is going to lead into our tone-based mechanics that we're going to do another tutorial on. And then after that, I don't know what after that, but those two things are coming up next. So yeah, so if you want to see that, do subscribe. Right now, I'm at 998 subscribers. I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself and say thank you for a thousand and assume that by the time you're watching this, I'm on a thousand, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I'm probably about to lose all everyone. But uh, yeah, just thanks very much. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers.